Hello, we're back. Hi. As one of the best lacrosse players of his generation, Paul Rabel certainly is no stranger to hard contact when crashing the net. A former NCAA national champion at John Hopkins and perennial all-star and former MVP in Major League Lacrosse, Rabel deservedly earned a reputation as a physically imposing force on the field. And he has also proven to be aggressive in the boardroom where he and his older brother Mike defied the doubters and fought to launch the Premier Lacrosse League. It was in June of 2019. That journey is now the subject of an ESPN film. John Barr and Outside the Lines are here with a preview. Hi, John. Paul Rabel went from playing in packed stadiums as a collegiate lacrosse player to toiling for years in relative obscurity in mostly empty venues as a professional lacrosse player. He was, in his own estimation, playing in a professional sport that was on life support. While Rabel was able to make a living playing professional lacrosse, mostly through lucrative endorsement deals, the salaries for most of his fellow players hovered in the tens of thousands, a humble existence he describes in his recently released ESPN film, Fate of a Sport, which Rabel and his brother co-produced. Here now is an excerpt. If you tell people you're a professional lacrosse player, the first reaction is, oh, I didn't know that existed. And the second is, oh, lacrosse, that's kind of the butt of everyone's joke. The experience of being a professional lacrosse player was terrible. I practiced in parking lots. I would travel to practice in Long Island, get back home to my apartment in Brooklyn, go across the street to a CVS and buy ice, and then break it up and ice my ankle or my foot because I broke it twice. And it's been a really hard 14 or so years walking around trying to convince people that I'm happy with what I do when I'm actually embarrassed. I put everything I have into this game because I love it. And I still have that passion for it that I did when I was hooked onto it. That's the paradox of being a professional lacrosse player, is that you're really good and you love this game and all the intricacies of it and the history of the game and what it stands for and the people that have played the game but you just don't feel that at the pro level. Despite those challenges, Paul Rabel was determined to save professional lacrosse to make it a viable business venture. That goal became a reality in 2019 with the launch of the Premier Lacrosse League, a league he co-founded, and that quest is documented in full in the film Fate of a Sport, and we are pleased to be joined now by Paul Rabel to talk more about that journey Paul, you and your brother took a huge risk in creating the Premier Lac Lacrosse League. It certainly hasn't been without struggles along the way. How do you feel about the league in its current state? Well, whew, I don't even know where to begin. I, it's, it's been such a journey, and, and I really feel like we're just at the beginning, if I'm being honest with you, John. Um, this partnership with ESPN, for those who watched the film, uh, was sort of our, our latest accomplishment the road is really long and windy, and uh, at the start of it, you're met with the obstacle, which is a league that existed that was under waging and resourcing players. I was one of them and didn't have much of a distribution plan. All the while, you have emerging leagues like the UFC, MLS, and F1. We just felt so much uh, conviction around where we thought lacrosse could be. Knew that it would be difficult, maybe not as difficult as you will see in the doc, but I think it was really just a matter of two questions. You know, why lacrosse has had this battered reputation over the last two decades and, and lacrosse is a Native American game. The history is so powerful to North America. And then the question a lot of people will also say is, well, I've heard of lacrosse. Why doesn't it exist at the pro level? And we wanted to figure that out. Well, you speak in the film and touch on the fact that doubt is really like a charger for your brother. You, you at one point say you just plug in the doubt and he goes, but you must have had some doubts of your own along the way that you could ever pull this thing off. How did you push through those low moments? Well, it's, it's an interesting thing because I, I really feel like Mike and I counterbalance each other in that he you know, looks at the potential margins for error while I look at all of the upside and the promise and the possibility and we meet in the middle. And there's something about athletes at the highest level in sport 
just the odds of them getting there are so low yet when we hit the practice facilities every day it feels so likely and uh i don't know where we learn that over time but it's this conviction and and i found that it may have actually been a little bit too speculative in the business world as we look back at what we got to but in sports it, it was so it was so normal and and so uh you know run of day for me and uh and i hope i can hold on to that despite learning about all the challenges and all the differences between business and and the field of play well you recently secured a new round of funding for the premier lacrosse league we should point out and you touched on it there's a broadcast deal in place with espn how secure is the future of this sport at the professional level, Paul? We feel very secure. Um, but, you know, whether you're a Fortune 500, a Fortune 100 company, uh, or you're a startup, the, the challenge is, is always kind of living in between. I think some of the best companies in the world, whether it's Walt Disney or Amazon or Google, they maintain a startup mindset, the culture, the communication. And while we have reached certain levels that we set out to back in 2019 and this latest round of funding with Churning Group and people like Kevin Duran and Rich Kleiman coming in, we still have to maintain that underdog mentality. And I think that ties back to sport in a lot of ways. And, and what you see in this film is um, a very kind of complicated experience that I have co-founding this with my brother, trying to build the business to where we want to go to while also playing on the field and meeting more loss on the field than I was in the boardroom. And I had a really hard time balancing that. And uh, we're often kind of channeled into not really chasing our dreams. And uh, for Mike and I, it was, it was far bigger than a sport and a league. We wanted to reconnect the community and people around the world with this Native American game. Paul, we have a little less than a minute left. Uh, your film touches on it. The excerpt we just saw touches on it. The disparity that seems to exist between the popularity of collegiate lacrosse and professional lacrosse. What's at the root of that, and how do you tap into that? Well, if you look historically at college football, college basketball, even college golf, those were sort of kings, so to speak, uh, ahead of amazing commissioners coming in and, and changing the way that they present the product. And the benefit of being a professional league is you have these heroes that are playing that were stars and all Americans in college, and then you can market them in different ways and you can create these humanizing stories around them. And, and Fate of a Sport is one way we're doing it. And we're hoping to do other original stories around a lot of our players that can inspire generations so that it's not just college lacrosse that you're dreaming to get to. It's now the premier lacrosse league. So it takes time, but really, really good storytelling and really good partners. And I think that's what we have right now. All right. Well, Paul Rabel, Fate of a Sport is streaming now on ESPN+. Plus. So stay tuned for that. And with that, we're going to send it back to SportsCenter.